Hey guys, so today we're doing part two of our baby food topic. We showed you guys a little bit about what you're gonna to need to make it, how to store it, how to feed it to the baby, and today we're actually gonna show you two baby food recipes so we can show it to you in action. All done. High five. I'm Meg and I'm passionate about finding easy, healthy, delicious recipes for kids. So let's talk about our ingredients. For the first recipe, you're gonna need spinach, mango, which has already been peeled and cut up, and then some frozen blueberries. Now, are these all in season right now? They're not. Actually, the blueberries, the reason they're frozen okay. is because they're not in season. Okay. If they're fresh, you can use fresh blueberries. Okay. And then the second recipe, you're gonna need butternut squash, which again, I've already cut up and peeled, and then a pear, which has been cut up and peeled. So before we get cooking, I wanna talk about something that's pretty important when you're making baby food, and that is the dirty dozen. It's not typers. What it is is a list of the 12 most contaminated foods when it comes to like pesticides and things like that. So things like spinach and pears are on there, while things like mango are on the least contaminated list. And things the reason, with a thicker skin, right? Yeah, in general. So the reason you wanna check this out is because, you know, it can be very expensive to buy organic food. Sometimes it's not widely available. So if you're prioritizing things, you should check out this list, and I'll leave the link to that down below. So now that we've covered that, let's get cooking. So we're gonna get everything cooking at the same time to make it as efficient as possible. The first one I'm gonna be boiling and the second one I'm gonna be steaming just so you guys can get a sense for both of them. In general, it's a little bit better to steam. You retain more of the nutrients, but we're gonna check out both ways. So I'm gonna get the heat on on both of my pots. Heat's on, the first thing I'm gonna do is put my frozen blueberries right into this empty pan and then thank you very much, the mangoes as well. And then I have a little, we don't need that quite yet, but okay. I'm gonna um, put a little bit of water in here. It's about like a quarter cup, um, just to get that little bit of liquid. Now how, how did you decide how much of the berries and fruit to use? So you know, I kind of have played around with it a little okay. bit to get the right quantities, but you really can't mess it up. You know, it's just gonna be so a different flavor. it doesn't really matter? Yeah, okay. and okay. like you can try different things. You know, if, blue, if you don't have blueberries, try blackberries, raspberries, you know, different okay. flavors. That's good to know. All right, so this is on. I'm just gonna get it heated until all of the um, ingredients are a little bit softened. And we won't put the spinach in yet. For the second recipe, what I'm gonna do is I have in my pan, I have about an inch of water, and then I have my little steamer in there, which you can see here. So the water is boiling. I'm gonna put my butternut squash right into the steamer basket. Ooh, look at that steam. Mm. And then my pear right in there as well and then I'm gonna cover it and steam it until it's soft. So back to our first recipe, the blueberries that and mangoes delicious. are kind of boiling and you can tell that they're getting soft, which is the goal. So now I'm just gonna put the spinach in and I'm really just looking for the spinach to wilt. So it's not gonna take more than a minute or two. All right, so the spinach is wilted and it's time to puree. So now it's all cooked and all we have to do is puree it. So for this one, we're gonna use the baby bullet and you're just mm -hmm. gonna put your mango, your blueberry, and your spinach right in here. And then it's also, you can see, coming with a little bit of the juice because some of the blueberries leach their juice right into the water. So you wanna get all that into it because that there are a lot really of delicious. <laughs> yeah. nutrients. Yeah, and it smells really good too, right? It smells amazing. Okay, so are we ready so to blend? blend? Yeah, let's okay. give it a try. Okay. I think we're done, yeah, let's check it. Oh, I didn't expect it to smell so good. good. Yeah, yeah Lincoln's it really great. gonna like it. Oh wow, it looks perfect. And this looks like a great consistency for Lincoln. Even with the spinach, which yeah. is really important, yeah. So I wouldn't do anything to this, but if it's too thick. If it's too thick, you can add either breast milk or formula okay. or a little bit more water. Oh, okay. So now that this is yeah. done, let's go check on our butternut squash. Sounds good. All right, so our butternut squash and pear should be soft, so I'm just gonna check on them. I test them with my finger or fork and I can tell that they're perfect. They're nice and soft, so I'm gonna take it over to puree. Okay, so everything steamed, so we're just gonna put everything into the blender. And that then- That delicious already. <laughs> yeah, and it smells really good too, and it's so healthy. And then if we need to, we're gonna use some of the water from steaming, because if any of the nutrients leaked out, they'll be right there in the water, and that way we're adding back in a little bit of oh, nutrition. Oh, that's a good idea. Let's get the last little bit in there, and then I pretty much know I'm gonna lead a little bit of the um, steam water. So I'm gonna scoop just like a ladle full in there to get things blending. And now we're ready. All right, so 
so that looks perfect. I'm pureeing it very finely for a baby like okay. Lincoln who's young. Yeah. But as they get older, you can actually introduce a little more texture. Don't puree it quite as finely um, okay. so they get used to chewing on that. You can also start adding a little bit of flavor in there. So a little bit of cinnamon, some nutmeg, just be aware. I was aware gonna that. ask you about that. Yeah, yeah, you can do that. So Avery, the, the first time I tried cinnamon, her whole mouth turned like bright red and I was terrified. So just be aware <laughs> that they can have a reaction to some of those spices. I'm gonna check the consistency and I actually want to taste this one. I love butternut <laughs> squash and it smells so good. It's in season. Mm. You good? Oh my gosh, it's so good. There's something I would never think to try packaged baby food, but there's something about the freshness of this oh, it and it's it warm. Makes you want to try it. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, let me another bite. <laughs> so that one was so delicious. I want to try this one okay, now too. Do it. Let me try it. Let me know. You want me to? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's really good. Gosh, it almost tastes like pie filling. It kind of does. Yeah. You can taste the spinach a little bit, but because of puree, it's just the taste. It's not like any of the texture, which is, yeah. I think, great. I can't this. believe that this has no added spices. And, and we made quite a bit just from that, that recipe, so we can go ahead and store it in the freezer. Which brings me to a question. What do you do, and we haven't had this problem too much, but a couple times, if you make a bunch and they don't like it. It, it, that can be very frustrating because you spend time like making it, you bought yeah. all the ingredients. So, you know, the first thing to know is that it can take babies like up to 20 times mm -hmm. to like something. So you kind of have to keep presenting them with it, get them used to it. Yeah. Um, the other thing sometimes I would do is I would buy the actual package version first to introduce my kids oh. to a taste to see okay. if they like it. And then once I knew I would remake it. But you know, I think just keep trying is the most important thing. And another yeah. a tip I got from another mom that really helped us, um, Lincoln always liked oatmeal mixed with a little bit of milk and so I would make the little bowl of oatmeal but then put some of the baby food so in with it. Them a little yeah, it gave them a little perfect. bit of the taste but it also covered it up and a little bit. And then as they get older, you can do the same thing with yes. yogurt. Oh, okay, that's yeah. good to know. <laughs> So hopefully between last week and this week, you guys have picked up a few tips for making baby food and a few recipes, and hopefully you'll give it a try like Brooke has been. Yeah, and I figure if I can do it, anyone can do it. And really you can start with something as simple as taking a ripe banana, that was the Absolutely. first thing I actually did, yep. and put it in the baby bullet, and then you know if you need to thin out the consistency a little bit, add some Totally. Water. Play around with it, have fun, you really can't go wrong and it's a lot of fun to kind of have that bond with your child making the baby food. And it is. It is a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave your favorite baby recipes down below so everyone else can see them and good luck. Bye guys. Bye. Good job, baby.